Richter. I'm from uh, the Cape Town Together Mowbray and Rosebank Community Action Network. And I want to uh, welcome you to our first Inspired Futures uh, dialogue series this morning. Um, what I'm going to do is just quickly go through some adm administrative tips around Zoom. And then I'm going to ask everyone if they're happy for us to record. And then I'll ask Kyla if she, she will help us to record. Um, so for people who haven't used Zoom before, uh, we're going to ask if you could keep your video switched off um, in order to save data. We know that it, uh, it draws less data if people are um, having their videos off. So if you are going to speak, we're going to ask you to put your video back on. Importantly, we're going to also ask people to please mute themselves uh, so that we don't hear the background noises. Um, you would hear the background noises on my side, including a, a lot of clattering, which we would, we would like to reduce. Um, there's in the chat function, if you open your uh, participants box and your chat, chat function, you'll see there's some icons that would include something called raise your hand. So when we get to the end of the four speakers and you have a question or a comment, I'm going to ask that you click raise your hand and we'll acknowledge you and hopefully we'll be able to get lots of people uh, to ask questions and to tell us what building back better means to them. I'm um, also going to encourage people to please use the chat function um, to tell us who you are and to tell us where you are from so that we get a bit of a, a sense of who the people are in the room. Um, I just want to check if there are any objections to us recording this session. Okay, I'm not seeing any, so I'm going to ask uh, Kyla if she can please start recording and we will put this up on social media directly afterwards. It's a great pleasure for me uh, to start off this Inspired Futures Dialogue um, and we have some really exciting speakers and a very compelling topic, Building Back Better. The three together networks have been in some contact with each other since their inception. And there was a great co-learning session a few months ago where the different togethers spoke about their, their experiences and we could learn from each other. Um, all the networks that are, are represented in the room this morning are built on solidarity and cohesion with a focus very much on the neighborhood. So community action networks or CANs or nodes or hubs respond to the needs of their, their neighborhood um, and draw on, on volunteers to respond. So the CANs or hubs, um, it's important to note, are non-partisan, non-religious and are not politi politically affiliated. Um, and each of these nodes or CANs are unique. Um, they zero in on the nodes, uh, on the needs of their, their community, and they galvanize support and solidarity within that area while linking to, to other nodes or CANs. Um, and today we celebrate the, the CANs and the networks, and it's, it's a great pleasure to be able to hear what some of the amazing work is um, that people have been involved in. So the, the Inspired Futures Dialogue that the three togethers have brought together is to help us think through collectively what the future holds for, for the togethers and for local activism, and also what building back better means. Um, so I'm gonna ask that we, we kick it off. Uh, before I go to the speakers, I just wanna quickly tell people how people on this call can be involved in us all conceptualizing building back better. And you will find that if you go to menti.com and you enter the code 51149, it will take you to a poll. And that poll will tell you to answer the question, what building back better means to you. So while you are listening to the speakers, perhaps tonight when you are in bed and you have to wake up with a good thought, please write in this, this poll what building back better means to you. And at the end of this week, we will collate all the answers and we'll see uh, what type of patterns emerge. So just remember it's menti.com and the code is 51149 and there some of my colleagues will put it in the chat box as well um, if you want to um, jot down a thought when it comes to you while listening to the speakers. We have three speakers this morning and we're going to start off with 
I just want to check if we can start off with Teppo from the Hope Can. He's having some load shedding issues and we're hoping that his cell phone battery lasts um, to give us an input and hopefully even for, for questions. Teppo, are you good to talk to us? And um, I hope uh, uh, it will work out better. Teppo, we can hear you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Please go ahead, okay, you have cool. seven minutes. All right, uh, I'm Tsepo from Katlehong Ken. Um, I've, I'm currently involved in farming in food distribution and um, distribution of educational packs for high schools. I've just um, adopted a high school right now called uh, Alafang High School, where we'll be initiating some farming projects. <laughs> Running some classes for that is something that is that is happening. Respect. What does building better mean to me? Well, I have three issues that have uh, issues that have actually highlighted on the matter. Uh, one will actually one is actually education, and the second one is uh, sustainable community farming, and the third one is the revival of the local spaza shops in the community as a way to drive employment and entrepreneurship. So starting with education, um, I'm very concerned about the level of education in South Africa, especially considering that the pass rate is 33%. A 33% pass rate basically tells us a lot, you know, because if you are to take such a student, maybe and put him in medicine, then there's over a 60% chance that you might not make it under uh, that uh, student's hands. So um, looking at that, I think that's currently one of the reasons of the highest, of the high unemployment rates that we have in South Africa. And uh, it's also the reason for the alcohol and drug abuse that we see, uh, the HIV and AIDS, the teenage pregnancy, cause these kids to see no value in education. So um, starting off with this coding projects that I am currently doing with Ecosasa Technologies via our part partnership, I actually figured that, cause we don't know where uh, the economy or where the socioeconomic dynamics of South Africa will be after this COVID-19. Uh, what the future jobs will look like, uh, what jobs would be enticing to the market and so forth. However, we are certain that everything is moving to the fourth industrial generation age. So uh, we need to try to tap into that as much as we can, because I feel that there's so many programs that are going around on the in internet that are currently for free that aims to address such an issue. And these companies who are currently looking for students whom they could groom um, under that. So on behalf of me and all the cans, I would, I'm thinking that using that platform to actually, cause these kids are tech savvy. They actually know the internet better than we do. They actually know how to use uh, phones better than we do. That's what I've actually picked up as well. So this wouldn't be a problem to them. It's gonna be an exciting challenge cause it actually will allow them to develop their own apps, you know, their own uh, programs with regards to social activities. And it's, it's, it will allow them to be innovative in a way. Uh, to actually address the future challenges that South Africa might face because we have to rely on them to actually uh, pick up the, the, uh, the pieces. So um, coding artificial intelligence and the massive rollout, especially if we use our CAN platform on that note, will actually do much good uh, in reviving the educational system in South Africa. So. That is something that I need us all to look into and uh, something that I'm very passionate about. So that is the first point that I wanted to make with regards to my presentation. So the second one is sustainable community farming. 
we've actually, uh, actually have two sites that I've done. I'm working on one as we speak, and I'm getting a positive response from the community with regards to that. Um, because the future of food security in South Africa is currently unknown, and we have vast land that we could use to actually produce our own food. So that is another model that I actually took so that we could try to have sustainable community uh, farming projects that would actually allow people to actually fend themselves. So with that being said, um, we have actually adopted one school, as I've said. So part of the rollout on the farming pro projects will actually to do this in school so that we could assist the school uh, food program with regards to nutritional sub support and so forth. So this program will actually, if it works out, because I'm speaking to Cairns about this, because I might need support so that we could use me and other Cairns as a pilot phase just to see if we could uh, do it in high schools first, then do it in primary schools, then uh, appoint sites in the com communities that we could also enroll this program on. So it's one of the initiatives that we could look at uh, with regards to building better. The third one is the revival of spaza shops to drive employment and entrepreneurship. Uh, there's currently a number of abandoned spaza shops in the com community due to the xenophobic attacks that have currently take, taken place and they're currently vac vacant. And I figured that we could perhaps uh, do a deal or a partnership with the likes of uh, Tiger Brands, Pick and Pay and ShopRite so that we could get those spaza shops active again so it could be done under their uh, enterprise uh, program or it could be done under their csi it's something that is also o o o open for the discussion because this is another way that we could actually get the uh, e uh, the economy township running again and we could also see this a way to actually drive entrepreneurship so those are my three key aspects that I wanted to raise or uh, to add to the building back uh, project. So I'm looking forward to hear what everybody says. Well, thank you very much. And I'm very glad we, we could hear you. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Nadia Mayman from Bontegevel Can to please um, please unmute thank you and i just want to let everyone know that we will have uh, a chance at the end for some some questions and comments please take it away nadia good morning everybody so i'm nadia and i'm from the bunchy volcan part of the cape town together network i'm also part of a community-based organization in bunchy called the bunchy joint peace forum so we have been working in the community for six plus years addressing the issues of crime and violence in the area. But since lockdown, our can has been involved in redistribution, food parcels when we manage to get them donated, learner packs for learners whose parents do not have access to internet and social media. We also have a COVID support, uh, COVID positive support group supporting families who are in isolation at home with food parcels and running to the shops and the chemist if needed. And currently we are in the process of establishing a community care center, but alas, we have had some negativity from politicians locally. Um, and obviously the party alliance supporters calling for the closure of the CCC, but we are confident and we are also resolute that we will do all that we can to render this much needed service to our community. So with regard to the building back better discussion, COVID has revealed and exaggerated the deep inequalities and injustices of our world, right? So like an X-ray, it has exposed the fault lines that shape our city. The pandemic, however, has also teach, uh, taught us um, the important lessons, meaning that this crisis could also be an opportunity to change our society to one that is more socially just, we can build better, build back better, sorry, 
by learning these lessons as we collectively build society that values people over profit and that we think is key. We can th think of what we have learned from COVID about how to build back better in three different ways. Um, firstly, our society, second, our economy, and then also governmental institutions. So I think with building back better in our society, the points that we highlighted were that we've seen many, many ordinary people start organizing in their own neighborhoods. The self-organizing we have seen in the cans across the city has demonstrated the power of collective action. And this is the power we have when we work together as groups of ordinary people. Um, secondly, we have also seen people organizing across race, class, and spatial divides, which has been awesome. We are starting to make inroads working across these lines, but we must sustain and strengthen these relationships. We need to continue to build social solidarity as this is the foundation of our work right now. And thirdly, we need new forms of leadership. Um, Tina, Tina so aptly says in one of the songs that we don't need another hero. And we have seen the power of collective leadership in the cans. No one leader is going to solve our complex issues, for instance. We need to bring people together to problem solve and take action as a collective. The CANS network structure has attracted a huge number of women, which has shown us how amazing our women in our society really is. And if I can speak a bit about uh, building back better with regard to our economy, I think COVID has helped to teach us what is essential in our society. Essential for us is not just doctors, it is everyone who is working hard to keep everyone safe and cared for. This includes shop tellers, teachers, refuse removal people, but it also highlights our community members cooking in their neighborhoods, our community champions, or just spreading trusted health information or making masks for others. These are all the people that we see as essential during this time. We've also seen cans across the city organizing to provide care, so what if our economy valued these forms of care and could we build a care economy centered around the people who care for others in our society? This must be part of the long-term building back better strategy is what we believe. And with regard to building back better and governmental institutions, we feel that we need government systems that are not about paperwork and the red tape, but are more about people and trust. We have a national crisis of accountability, but more paperwork and more compliance culture will not solve this issue. Through the camps we have, for instance, seen and learned that we are accountable to each other. These more horizontal forms of accountability um, or social accountability are about trust and compliance, and we need to keep moving at the speed of trust. Um, that is very important to us. Um, secondly, we need to have much more radical forms of public participation, where we have ongoing and sustained communication that close the gap between those making the decisions and those living with the consequences. We don't want a tick box experience as we've experienced many times before but active engagement by communities affected by, by, by whatever is being implemented. We have started to see this with some government departments reaching out to can seeking inputs from professors on the street, but this is only the beginning and it requires commitment from both sides to make this happen and also to sustain these relationships. And then in conclusion, I think um, this crisis has shown how fragile our society really is. And going back to normal is one of the worst things that could possibly happen. There was nothing normal about our society we had before COVID arrived. But thousands of people have stepped up and started taking action. So all in all, we have already started um, the Building Back Better campaign and demonstrating um, just how possible Building Back Better is for all of us. 
um, I think that is it from me at this point. Um, I'm open to any questions if there are any. Thank you. Nadia, thank you so much. That was, that was very beautiful. Um, we're going to hold questions or comments to the end. And I'm going to hand over to Ludwig to please talk to us from the Eastern Cape. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you're good. My name is Ludo Majiza. Um, I'm a permaculture practitioner from Kubiso. It's around Case Kamaok in the Eastern Cape. Uh, I'm an active member of the Eastern Cape Together. Um, I'm also the founder and the CEO of, of Vunikaya Permaculture. Um, I work to equip young people with skills for sustainable agriculture and to build food security, you know, and um, health and, and healthy communities. So, so my involvement through through these networks, um, I mean, it was shortly when when the pandemic started. Um, you know, we were having discussions. Uh, I'm also part of a network called Invoto Ubo Learning Network, and and uh, and through that uh, network, um, we realized that we had to, you know, take action. Now that network is made up of. Um, different types of people, students, academics, researchers, professors, um, farmers, um, and uh, yeah, a whole lot of people. And amongst ourselves, we realized that, you know, um, eventually we're gonna be hardest hit because um, of how remote our environment is. And, um, and we had to find ways, you know, to address this for, for specifically for our environment, our communities in the Eastern Cape, and how remote everything is, is challenging. So we did things, you know, a little bit differently um, uh, compared to the other uh, two cans that, that are here with us. And, and we realized that, you know, the information coming out to, um, to everybody coming from the World Health Organization, the pre presidency, Department of Health, etc. Um, it's all in English, and and you know we, we we understood that majority of our communities in rural Eastern Cape speaks is close, and and not only that, but you know what 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 does this mean? What does washing your hands every now and then mean when you don't have water? Those type of things, you know. So so we had to find ways. Um, you know, I mean the pandemic had started, and we had to find ways immediately. Uh, to 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 uh, to give them information um, and to help them, you know what, how to uh, to transcribe all of this. And and we started a network, obviously using our networks, um, our farmers' networks. Um, we started our can uh, and learning from the Cape Town can, uh, where 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 we actually use digital platforms. Um, because of the remoteness and, and you know, um, so we decided to use uh, the digital platform and WhatsApp was the, the quickest and easiest way to reach out to people and inform people. So we're coming from, a, from, fr from just, you know, where we just inform people, uh, we update people what's happening and we translate the information so that it means something in their context, in their specific, specific environments, which is powerful. And we managed to have a reach of um, just over 200 villages. So when we had all these uh, all these champions in these networks, and and they'd be communicating with all the uh, communities, uh, people in their communities, whether it's over the fence, um, you know, or or like we're saying, say, sending the WhatsApps. So we found it pretty powerful and very um, effective. Okay, and then. Um, Looking at at building back together, um, so so what we've realized is, um, you know, our own communities are able to actually organize um, through this um, through this Eastern Cape Can. Uh, that's what we, that's what we've seen because it's actually the two hundred different, um, you know, um, people that are actively on the ground that are driving this. Not really the team that. That's coordinating. So, so they actually come to us and tell us how, how, what's, what's, what's the impact on the ground, and then from that we are able to, you know, um, send out the guidelines and and advise further. And there's different groups that have been involved here. So we've and it's different races, different ages, people from different 
with different backgrounds. And we've also seen that uh, collective leadership works. Um, you know, it's it's been really powerful in our in our in our spaces. And 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 you know, we've we've exposed. I mean, the 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 government the cracks in the government systems have been exposed. So so we really need to look at how we can uh, build. You know, from the ground. I mean, we've seen how um, the states of our hospitals. Etc. And just uh, getting basic water in our environments is quite challenging. And then moving to the farming, um, you know, we, we we certainly believe that uh, small scale farming is 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 something that must uh, really now um, be given attention, uh, and and you know, action as well. Um, that's the most important thing. There needs to be action in that space. Um, we were lucky to receive um, some seedlings, you know, from um, from Food and Trees and, and 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 Rhodes University, which we could distribute to their communities. Um, and and you know, that's uh, initiatives like that. You know, it's not just about giving out, but having a plan and having you know um, follow ups and 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 ensuring that you know these farmers these small scale farmers are able to produce and 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 get things to markets and and collaborate and you know and have access to the markets so that's that's been very powerful and then learning and knowledge exchange has been uh, a tool we've used so that's also been quite uh, uh effective um yeah that's about it from us thank you Thank you so much. Lipet. That was that was really inspiring. Um, and I am I'm keeping an eye on the chat and there's lots of um, lots of thumbs up for the speakers um, and lots of uh, ideas that have been generated. I'm going to ask uh, Mark to, as the respondent to to tell us a little bit about his thoughts on local activism and the together is where we should be going next and what building back better means to him. Thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you very much, Marlies. And uh, thank you, Seppo, Nadia, and Ludwe. I think people have said on the chat how inspiring your input was. And that's exactly what I was thinking uh, as I was listening to your ideas on uh, building back uh, together. Um, thank you also just uh, colleagues, comrades for asking me to reflect on these uh, presentations. It's really uh, a privilege because I find the work of the uh, Together Networks and the Community Action Networks incredibly innovative uh, and inspiring. Uh, and I think they are uh, really one of the most important developments to come out of this horrible uh, crisis of, 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 of COVID-19 that we are, we are going through. Um, I have tried to be uh, supportive of CAMS in my day-to-day uh, -day activism. I've worked a little bit with the, with the NOAA CAN in Johannesburg, with the Makers Valley Partnership, and this weekend uh, spent some time with the Inner City CAN uh, in, in Johannesburg. Um, but I'm also trying, and I'll mention this just by way of introduction, to use my position as the editor now of Maverick Citizen to give a media platform to report on the work of the cans uh, to a what much wider audience and to try to draw support and resources uh, to the cans uh, as nadia uh, and others will know you may have seen yesterday we carried an article uh, about the bonte uh can and about its successes and its efforts uh, uh, but also about the attempts by the councillor to undermine uh, uh, that work. So I just want to say to people um, that you should use that space. Uh, it's your space. And I want to continue to uh, 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 use that space in a way that empowers and mobilizes and inspires uh, this movement uh, that you are, are, are part of. So, so I listened uh, carefully uh, to, the, to the three presentations, and I really want to just kind of draw what I think are the, the key themes that came out of the presentations 
uh, around the, the theme of building back uh, better and, and make uh, six points. And I make those six points based upon what I've heard, but also trying to blend it with my own experience as an activist from the treatment action campaign from section 27 and being involved in in mobilizing around another epidemic the hiv uh, epidemic which uh is by no means uh over and in fact one of the crises that we're probably going to have to talk about uh in our cans at some point is that covid19 has made existing health inequalities and existing health crises are uh, so much deeper. Uh, just take HIV alone, COVID-19 probably threatens to throw us back uh, 10 years in terms of what we have achieved. And when I say we have achieved, what we as activists have achieved in improving access to, to, uh, to, to, to treatment. So, so let me make my, my, my six points and, I, and I'll, spell them out and I'll come back to each one just very briefly. The six points that I would recommend are to the Kens are number one, have a long view. Number two, know your power. Number three, know where your resources are and where they are not. Number four, build local. Uh, number five, understand politics, and number six, uh, build looking forward. And I just want to unpack each of those with reference to some of the things that Seppo, Ludwe, and Nadia have, have, have said. Uh, so, so first of all, talking about having the long view. Nadia said that, you know, the, the normal, we don't want to go back to the normal. The normal was not normal. And I think that that is, is, is critical. We don't aspire to the end of the COVID-19 epidemic uh, in order that the way power was used can be resumed uh, uh, to create the societies and environments in which we, which we struggle. And I think that's what, one of the reasons why the Cairns need to realize that the COVID-19 crisis is not a short-term emergency crisis. Uh, even though there's growing evidence now that we've passed the peak of the first surge in most of the provinces, and I was consulting last night with, with doctors, uh, um, it's likely that there will be many waves of COVID uh, 19. It's also probable that when the COVID-19 crisis passes, in inverted commas, it can be replaced by another uh, 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 health, health crisis. But also you can't separate the health crisis from the social crisis that, that uh, uh, COVID has, 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 has created. Um, you know, Serpo referred to, we don't know what the economy will look like after COVID-19. We don't know exactly what the economy will look like after COVID-19, uh, but we do know that it will be a crisis economy and particularly a crisis economy for poor people and for marginalized uh, uh, people. It will be an economy in which there will be more unemployed people, more w women, more marginalized than they were even before. And, and, and that is why when we talk about economies, as you did, Serpo, we have to not only envision a new economy, but we have to start to build new economies in the way that you described what I would call a well-being economy, where you connected education, sustainable community farming, and the revival of local sparser shops. I think the problem of activists over many years is that we're good at describing a vision, but whilst we talk about what we want, we don't do enough to build what we want, and that's one of the differences with the cans. So that's, that's my f first point of view. Don't have a, a, a mistaken belief that this will be over in two or three months. But even whilst we have a long view, we need to 
work to meet short-term needs as the CANs have been doing around food security in particular. But I think by meeting short-term needs, what we do is we build our power. And that's the second point that I, I wanted to make, which is to say to all of us that often we feel very powerless. And before COVID-19 came along, we felt very powerless. But the reality is, and you have shown this, that we have power in our uh, 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 communities. Um, Ludwig you know, said, he's surprised at the power of the 200 people uh, in the Eastern Cape who have, have, have been doing the work. We have enormous uh, power as people. The problem is that we haven't used that power effectively. And, you know, Nadia re referred to the CAMS, and this is really one of the important developments as working across class, race, and, and social divides. And, and that's, that's the critical point, is that class, race, and social divides have been used to divide us, and we have allowed ourselves to be divided. But, but the CANs are beginning to, to, to overcome that. I would also say before I move to point three, that we have great legal power. And that's what we discovered with the treatment action campaign, that our constitution and knowing the constitution should really be uh, part of the curricula of every can makes people in South Africa, the most powerful people in the world, at least in law. And if we utilize that power, we discover that we can actually bring about about change. Now, there isn't time to go into the history of the Treatment Action Campaign, but I can tell you that when we started it back in late 1998, we were less than 10 people. Uh, HIV was clouded in stigma, in discrimination, in fear, in misunderstanding. People were like Gugu Dlamini were being killed for disclosing their HIV status, but we were able to build power, and we built that power not initially amongst people who already had power, like middle class people, but amongst people who thought that they had no power, particularly black women living with, with, with HIV. So that's point two. Point three is, is find your resources. And here again, I think that the CANs have led the way because we discover as we start these campaigns that actually the resources uh, exist already in our, in, in, in our communities. And, and building power and finding resources are, are, are linked because the more we build this power, the more we find that we have the resources within us. And again, drawing back from my experience in the Treatment Action Campaign, the Treatment Action Campaign was probably actually at its strongest when it had its least resources. In the days when it wasn't beholden to, to a multitude of donors, uh, and where it relied upon voluntarism and activism, it, it had the most uh, uh, resources. And I really think that CANs, as they think forward, would be making a mistake if they start reaching out to traditional donors with traditional funding proposals and so on and so on. That model does not work. And that model is one of the reasons why civil society has been unable to bring about deep transformation in the last, in, in the last period. Point number four is, is build local. We keep on hearing about social compacts that are promised to us by Cyril Ramaphosa and business, et cetera, et cetera. I think that a social compact is a very good idea, but a social compact, it will never be delivered by the elites. And therefore, what you are doing, and what I hear from Sepp or Nadia Ludwe, is that in effect, we're building social compacts from below. And I think that's what we need to be doing. That's how we need to be thinking about it. We're building, building social compacts across class, across race, across gender, across different uh, 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 economies. We're building, as I saw in, in the Makers Valley in Johannesburg, a well-being economy. And that, I think, is what Serpo is, is, is also uh, uh, describing uh, when he talks about reviving local spaza shops 
uh, 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 and so on. And once we, once we start to do that, um, uh, uh, we will build cohesion, uh, further cohesion into our, 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 our community action networks. I'm aware of time, so I'm going to take two more minutes. The, the fifth point, understanding politics. Um, um, you know, CANs are not party political, as, as Bonte Hewell said in the article they wrote uh, about what is happening there. But, that, but not being party political does not mean that CANs are not political. Food is political. Social security is political. All of this is poli po political. It depends upon how we understand and mobilize around politics. And as we chart a path into the future, through cans, we have to understand politics. We have to try to understand, Serpo, what the world is going to look like in six months' time, in 12 months' time, in two years' time, because it means that we have something of a compass, and it means that our communities have, have something uh, of a compass. But, but what I would say about understanding politics is that you know, civil society has been weakened by the fact that it describes politics in such a gray, boring, unimaginative, uh, ideological way that means that it talks to itself and not to people. It excludes rather than it includes. And that, I think, is what Cairns are beginning to do differently. They're beginning to find a new language uh, uh, for politics and for political struggle. And then the last point, the, my point six, which is in some ways linked to building local and, and having a long-term view, is, is building forward. What you're doing, what I hear from, from each of the presentations, is not a, just a critique of why we are in this crisis, but is an idea about how we get out of this crisis. And I think we should all understand that what will galvanize people to join cans and to become activists will be a belief in the in the vision that that you describe uh, uh, of, of of the different uh, communities that this is what you're building started as a crisis response but it doesn't end as a crisis response it ends as a way of reconfiguring uh, our society and of reconfiguring our our views so those are the six points. I, I, I make them a bit glibly because I know how difficult this work that you are doing heroically is uh, from talking to people. I know it often feels how, where are we going to find the resources to do this? Our activist base is dependent on too small a number of people. We're tired, we're demoralized. But, but I think if you look back over the last few months, you should be inspired by what you have done because if it wasn't for the work of Cape Town together, Eastern Cape together, uh, Gauteng together, I know from what I've seen that a lot more people would have died and a lot of people would be starving and that you brought a lot of, lot of, lot of hope. So let me conclude by saying that what I've finally heard from each of the presentations is that we need to think differently. You know, Serpo talked about three issues, you each talked about three issues, but we must stop not only working in silos, but thinking in silos. Education is connected to sustainable community farming, is connected to reviving local spaza shops. Society is connected to, 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 it, to economy. If we think differently about these struggles that we, were in, that, that we are involved in, we will get different outcomes and we will feel the power that we have. It's going to be tough, but it's going to be exciting. And I think I heard from each person some joy in what we are all discovering in the people that we discover and the power that we discover. So, so let me stop there and I hope I didn't take too long, but I think I got excited by the presentations and, and thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you, Marlies. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, I think that was um, a lot of, of food for thought. Um, and I think the enthusiasm and, and the hope that you and all the other speakers spoke about um, are particularly important and inspiring to all of us. 
we have a couple of minutes and we are very interested to hear in the in the next five or six minutes if there are any responses or questions from um, the people on this call from the the comments and the chats it's clear that people uh, are fired up and uh, that there are some thoughts bubbling under uh, I'm going to ask people if they could use their their chat and participant uh, function on zoom and if you want to ask a question or to comment raise your hand and I'll acknowledge you um, and uh, ask you to, to tell us what, what is on your mind. Any takers? Thank you, Erica. Please go ahead. Erica, is it possible for you to unmute yourself? Sorry, I muted you. No worries. Okay, Erica, can you hear me now? <laughs> Please go ahead, Erica. Okay, I'm from the Food Growers Initiative and um, we have spent a bit of time in the last couple of months uh, looking at alternative economies and actually started using the Zato system and are looking at uh, implementing a seed bank exchange now on the talent system so i think uh, the discussions around a, a way out of where we are now uh, something that gives people meaning and purpose not just growing food it's about self-emancipation that this, this discussion needs to be continued thank you erica penny Penny, could you try to unmute yourself and tell us what uh, what you are thinking? Ah, sorry. No I worries. Was away. Thank you. This is Penny. I'm from Clavelli in Cape Town, the Clavelli Can between Corpe and Fishhook. Um, awesome. Thank you very much for this platform and for the presentations. Uh, just around the funding issue, I think looking at the longer term ga um, game, you know, we were talking about sort of beyond the initial and looking at sort of longer term systemic kind of change. Um, from myself sitting in a middle to upper class income area, I think one of the key funding um, streams is around galvanizing the resources that, that I have the privilege of having access to. In sitting in an area like this, and this the cans and and this pandemic, um, and the response, the build build back better, uh, definitely provides an opportunity for activists to work towards flattening the curve. And the curve that flattening the curve is flattening the mountain, and that that mountain is the mountain of inequality in this country. So we have a huge issue with inequality in the country. Quite a lot of us are sitting in middle to upper in income areas. And it's how to use this as an opportunity to really address at a local level that inequality in between ourselves and the areas around us. Thanks. Thanks very much, Penny. Any other comments that I see? Eleanor's hand up. We did see Eleanor's hand up. So if you would still like to comment, Eleanor, uh, we can unmute you. Um, otherwise, Molly says a question that came through from Kerry in the chat, who said, Please. I'm interested in how the different cans maintain the partisan and flat hierarchical structure while working towards the future together. And it might be one, I'm not sure if any of our um, speakers or respondents can speak to, because I think this is often, it's a big question in any movement space of how to, really uh, maintain and manage a flat structure? Thank you. Um, that's a great question. I'm seeing Z and Munde, I'm seeing your hands up. I'm going to ask any of our speakers if they have uh, some thoughts on how to maintain the flat non-hierarchical structures. If you could just indicate with your hand and then we can, we can unmute you.
Nadia, Tepo, Ludwig, do you have any input? Is there perhaps anyone from the floor who would like to speak to this about how it works in their cans? Perhaps I'll give big a and scary question. <laughs> what was that, Kyla? No, so I think it's quite a big and scary question. <laughs> I think it's one of the. <laughs> Perhaps what I'll do is I'll ask Mondem Z if uh, if they have any thoughts on this on this specific question or if they would want to to give the input that they want uh, that they were thinking of. Monde, please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank Malaysia. Can you hear me? We can. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I, just a quick one. You know, um, interestingly, Mark speaks about um, what is this a long view. Um, and and uh, you know our can um, has been very worried about uh, the snags that have been happening in the in the processes uh, unfolding uh, throughout this uh, this emergency, and it makes me think about uh, the vaccine period. If we get to the vaccine, I mean, if uh, we take uh, what has been happening, uh, you know, as a standard, surely we we must be worried about how the vaccines will be uh, will be rolled out. Uh, my, my particular concern has also been around the issue of lack of uh, communication, uh, you know, in the different localities. Um, in schools, we did, uh, uh, what is this, uh, uh, precinct observations in the schools, and we saw, uh, what is this, um, a disjoint between what was happening in the schools and the communities surrounding, uh, you know, uh, uh, those schools. And I think uh, what we saw lacking a lot was the involvement of uh, local government and also uh, uh, what is this communication? So, if Mark uh, can possibly speak into uh, what is this uh, uh, issues of communication, uh, you know, around the uh, the pandemic, as far uh, in as far as uh, uh, what is this uh, behavior modification is 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 uh, is concerned. Thanks, Mondi. What can or area are you from? Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, I'm Not from the Wadwell. Uh, I'm from the Wadville Pen. Uh, that's in Binoni. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us, Monde. I'm going to give Z the last opportunity if he wants to make a comment, and then I'm going to unfortunately wrap it up. I'm seeing there's some really useful uh, comments and insertions in the chat box. I'm going to ask that people please continue that. Um, um, Z, would you like to tell us what, what is on your mind? Um, thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Um, what is on my mind is us, all of us gathering in this chat zone um, where three provinces are uniting to solve common good, to try to stand up together as forever. This is amazing for me. I would like to share that um, we are the power that we need. We are what we will trying to change. This, these platforms like this should happen more often where we get to connect um, with other provinces about building back better. In fact, this is building back better where we have um, a platform to share opportunities, to share learnings and to share a way forward of the, inc of the exciting work we are doing. I would like to say thank you so much. Um, let's carry on the good work that we are doing. Thanks to the speakers. Thanks to the comment. Um, let's continue build back better. Um, one question which I would like to have for us is um, most of us are engaging with existing structures in different ways, but I would like to ask if um, what are the main challenges that we are facing? Because um, most of us are trying to look at sustainability through the cans. Uh, most of us are still trying to answer questions of how to build back better. So many things that are hanging, but we have done a lot yeah. to play our part. But I would like to ask if, um, are we relying on existing structures the most or are we just trying to be the voice of the people organizing in a community level? Thank you. Thank you very much. Nzi is from, from the Langa Can. Um, I think there's a number of really interesting questions that have been raised. Um, I think um, Z says it really well by saying this, this forum itself is a way of building back better and it's something that we have to continue. We have, we have noticed and noted many of the, the questions and the, the responses and we will, we will take it back to think about how we might be able to, to organize more of these forums. I'm going to end it off by thanking all our speakers. Um, 
for a really great start to a Wednesday morning. And also the, the various co-learning people from the three togethers who worked very hard to put the session together. Um, and then lastly, to the Cathedral Foundation, um, who made their Zoom platform form available for us to have this. So a big thank you to everyone. A last request to please go and put your, your wisdoms in the, the Mentimeter, and we'll keep that open um, and then feed back your ideas. Thank you very much, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Um, Alice, I'm going to, I just want to export the chat. So I'm going to keep us open for now um, and also just complete the recording. Thanks so much all.